Today I brought you out to the mountains because a lot of you have been asking how to make charcoal and so today I'm going to show you a really easy way to do it. Let's get started. Now charcoal may not seem that sexy of a thing to make, but it's actually very valuable. We buy it in bags usually for grilling, for summertime cooking, but it's also used for melting metals with the mini metal foundry. Some medical applications use it for extracting poisons out of your stomach if you swallow something wrong. It's used in air filters, water filters, and pyrotechnics for making black powder. So it's a very versatile substance and it's very easy to make. Now all you need to get started is some kind of a steel can, like a coffee can or a tuna can. Even a can of beans will work. I just went to the paint section at home Depot and got one of these one quart paint cans. You can see it's empty. It's about two and a half dollars, but while you're there, you may as well pick up some of these paint stir sticks as well. They're completely free. You can usually get about as many as you want, and these are what we're going to be using to make the charcoal itself. Now, these paint sticks are obviously too long to fit in there by themselves, so we need to break them into smaller pieces, but the idea is to shove as many of them as we can get in there at once. So, let's get busy. Go ahead and cram as many pieces of wood inside the container as you can. And if you're using something like a paint can, be aware that there's a liner here that's gonna burn off. You really don't wanna breathe that stuff in. So just put your lid on securely, bang it into place like you would a can of paint. And then we're gonna need a vent hole right here on the top and you can use a screwdriver or something like a sharp pointy rock just to make a nice little hole in the center. That's gonna act as a vent hole for letting out some of the pressure when it's in the fire. Now you don't have to use paint stir sticks to make your charcoal. In fact, you can use any sticks lying around the ground or even some leftover sawdust. They'll work just as well. I've got three cans of wood here. One is our paint stir sticks. Another one is filled with sawdust. Another one is random twigs and sticks we found at the ground. So let's light up a fire and get these things roasting. Now as the can starts to heat up, you can see it starts smoking and that's because all the gases inside the wood are being released. That's hydrogen, methane, and all kinds of other things like acetone, pitch, just a ton of stuff. But we're getting that all out of the wood and because there's no oxygen in there, the wood is going to char but it's not going to burn. That fire's getting pretty healthy so let's throw all three of them on at the same time. Now when this smoke starts pouring out enough and this gets hot enough, you're going to notice that this smoke actually catches on fire. It'll create a very flammable gas that some people call wood gas, and in some countries, like in Germany, they used to use that to run their vehicles. Looks like that one may be done. This other one's in there so tightly, I can't even get to it without it burning my fingers. Oh no, my charcoal caught on fire. So apparently if there's too much pressure building up in there, the whole lid might pop off. Now you can see this one still has a flame coming out of it, but the other two have gone out. That means these ones are done. We can take them out of the fire and let them cool down for about 10 minutes. All right, all of our containers have pretty much stopped smoking. It's important to use something like a stick or a piece of aluminum foil to uh, cover that hole so no air or sparks fall, fall down into that charcoal. And be careful you don't touch these. They are extremely hot. They're gonna need about five to 10 minutes to cool down before you can really touch them. Now it's been about 10 minutes and this can is very cool to the touch. So let's go ahead and remove our stopper and hope that no sparks got down inside there. But even if they did, I don't suppose it will have done too much damage at this point. Now all we need to do is take something like a sharp rock, a screwdriver, or even a sharp stick to pry this lid off so we can peek down inside and see what we just made. There we are. And look at that. Our paint sticks have virtually been reduced to half their size. And look how they've turned completely black and crispy. Mm. Look how everything's shrunk down in size. It's quite a bit smaller. And even bigger sticks like this that used to be tough to break, you can break them easily. And they're black all the way through. Now I'm excited to see how this one turned out. This is the sawdust, which I'm hoping will save us a little bit of work trying to grind the charcoal down into powder. Let's just, I had this one filled up to the top, so let's see how it came out. Ooh, that is weird, look at that. Almost makes like chunky biscuits. So if you compress these together, you can make your own charcoal briquettes out of sawdust. Look at that. Well, there you go, I'd say that was a complete success. We turned stir sticks, uh, sawdust, and sticks we found off the ground into charcoal, and there's a hundred applications that you could use this stuff for, which I'll probably show you in future videos. But in the meantime, if there's anything specific you'd like to see me do, put your comments down below and maybe I'll make it happen. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Talk to you then.